Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'd like to share with you what book I've been reading lately. And it is none other than The Secret History of the World by Jonathan Black. So Jonathan Black is the pseudonym for Mark Booth. So if you do happen to find this book in your local bookstore or wherever, and you see that it in fact has Mark Booth named as the author, then just know that it is in fact one in the same person. So what the secret history of the world means to me, this book so far, personally, I can only describe it as mind blowing, thought provoking, really just intriguing, interesting, um, inspiring, inspirational. Um, they even say here, Anne Rice actually described it as maddening, challenging, provoking and inspiring. Beautifully written, she said, my mind is on fire with argument and wonder. And that's exactly what this book has been to me. I think I read like 400 pages in two sittings. That is how interesting it's been. So I just want to read what it says on the back cover here. It says, how will the world end? Is the Antichrist coming or is he already here? Jonathan Black considers all these questions and many more in this fascinating new edition, which will change the way you see the world. From mystic revelations to esoteric codes, here is a history of the world based upon the beliefs of the secret societies. A radical reinterpretation of human existence and a view of the world previously hidden from us. So, I'm not going to give away too much. I probably won't be able to describe it in full detail anyway, even if I tried. But I can tell you that this book explores the beginning of humanity. It explores how the world was created and how we as humans evolved from a pure mineral state into a vegetative state, then an animal state and eventually the human state that we are in now. So I have to mention that I didn't want to do this video purely on this book. I want to also show you the sacred history by the same author. And the reason why I'm showing you both of these books is because I think you have to, personally, I think you have to read this one first before you read the secret history. So I read this book many years ago. I think I have to reread it, but I remember vaguely um, the themes in the book. You know, I had a look at um, the the chapters, the the headings, things like that before I actually read the secret history. Just to recap in my mind, and I was actually surprised by how much I could remember, although it wasn't in too much detail. But the salam the similarities between these books are in the fact that they both speak about creation and like I said how humanity started the beginning of the world up to today so the sacred history focuses like the secret history it also focuses on the spiritual world spiritual beings such as angels um, human beings who had spiritual powers, like mystics, um, psychics, healers, and not to mention the, the creators of the major world religions or the major religious teachers or figures of history. So what I like about the secret history is that it's almost... A summary of the sacred history so if you don't feel like reading both then I want to say you can only read this one I have to add that once you've read this you may actually find that you loved it so much you enjoyed it thoroughly and you may have to you may find yourself reading this book anyway so um, like I said I've been reading the secret history and my mind is just completely blown by what Jonathan Black has said in this book and he's really done his research I mean he's he's quoted from scientists professors 
archaeologists, people who really know what they're talking about. And what I like about this book is that it doesn't discredit anything, really. It, it speaks about all theories being possible and probable. It doesn't discredit evolution. It actually speaks about that evolution is true and that it really happened. It just takes it as a fact. And at the same time, it does not discredit any particular religious group, which is really interesting because it speaks about the history of all the major world religions and it tries to draw similarities between all of them. You'll also find similarities um, in terms of like how the major world religions started and who started them. That is very, very interesting. I really have to say, for instance, the idea that I think Mithras was born on the 5th of December, just like Jesus Christ. And also born of a virgin. Now that's one example. You have many of these similarities, many of these correlations between different religions within this book. And then the other thing I really, really love about this is there are two sections where they've actually included color pictures, <laughs> color images of of artworks with hidden messages and hidden symbols, because that's what this book is about. It's about things that were previously hidden and are now coming to light. So I just really love exploring these historical artworks and these historical figures. And like I said, you have to really read this book in order to properly understand what I'm saying because your mind will be blown. Um, I will just have a look at the chapters, the titles of the chapters, and then you can decide for yourself whether you'd like to check this book out. So basically, I'm just going to skim over it quickly. Like I said, it starts off with a creation story, all right? Then it starts... It goes on to speak about the Garden of Eden. It mentions then Lucifer as the light of the world. Then it speaks about the angels. Gosh, it talks about ancient Egypt, Alexander the Great, Zarathustra, Moses, it mentions a lot of biblical figures like Elijah and Elisha. It then goes on to speak about Buddhism as well as Christianity, Islam, and then there are even chapters that are not really related to religion. For instance, the part about William Shakespeare and his history, where it talks about the theory that Shakespeare did not write his own plays and stories, that he actually had someone else writing it on his behalf. So that's definitely something you want to check out. It then mentions the occult roots of science, the age of Freemasonry. It talks about the Illuminati the mystic death of humanity, and the origin of the days. So I have not yet finished the book. As you guys can see, the bookmarks hanging out here. I am still going to read about the Illuminati, which would be really interesting. And then, of course, I'm going to read the ending of the book, which I personally think is the most important part because it's like a summary of the whole book. Anyways, um, all I can say is that these books, The Sacred History and The Secret History, have really broadened my mind. They have challenged me to completely see the world differently, to not discredit any theory. And perhaps the most important thing that I've learned is that just because you don't understand something doesn't mean that it's not true. So, for instance, if you're using any religious text as a framework and you're using it for whatever purpose, divination, inspiration, you can't always, can't always interpret it 
in a certain way. You have to be open to different theories. And reading the secret history now has shown me exactly that. That you have to be open to other theories and possibilities. <clears throat> and that just because you don't understand something doesn't mean that it's wrong. It just needs further interpretation or investigation. Right, so if you can get your hands on these, even if just to read, not to purchase, please do read Jonathan Black's books. He's written a few more books. I've only ever read The Sacred History and The Secret History. And once I'm done with that, I'll probably read some of his other books as well. Alright guys, thanks for watching and stay safe. Bye for now.